kind of see it, it's kind of almost like simulating what that z-score curve is similar. But this is actually a little different. This is now proportion. So these are sample proportions. Every single one of these dots is a different random sample. You can see over here where it says randomized simulation, randomized randomization sample. These are numbers are changing for every sample. So I created thousands, 3,000 random samples under the premise that 10% really is the population percentage. So this is a way of judging sampling variability if the null hypothesis was true. Now again, we were doing a left-tailed test, so it works kind of the same way. Click left tail, and we wanted 5% in the tail, so we're going to change that 0.05. Now this is sort of, this is not a critical value, right? Remember when we did this on the curve, this was a z-score critical value. But it's not, it's actually now a proportion. It's sort of where do the sample proportions have to be for it to be significant, right? So um, again, they're saying if it's 0 0.075 or lower, so if you were 0 0.07 or 0 0.06 or 0 0.05, you would be considered significant. If you're higher than 0 0.075, then you're not significant. Let's look at our original sample. Our original sample was 0 0.09. So in randomized simulation, you're comparing the, samp the original sample statistic, just, just this sample proportion, to all of these simulated proportions based on the null hypothesis being true. And if you see, 0 0.09 is right here, right? It's not in the tail. So it's not in the tail, so not significant. Kind of this is a way of judging significance without having to deal with this, the critical value and the test statistic. Now what is the p-value? Again, this is not the p-value, this is the significance level. So the p-value is the probability of getting this original sample data if the null hypothesis was true by sampling variability. All right, so here's sampling variability. If the null is true, we want to get the probability of getting this sample proportion, 0 0.090, or more extreme. So all you do is you put the original sample statistic in this bottom box right here. So 0 0.090, and push OK, and we get the approximate p-value. Now obviously in the, in the curve, we got 0.279, here in the randomized simulation, we're getting 0.246. Now, simulations, remember, are sampling variability. So my simulation here that I'm showing you won't be the same necessarily as the one you do. Um, when you do your simulation, um, you will um, uh, uh, may get a different, a slightly different number here, but we'll, we're all pretty close. Well, pretty close. Also, when I did the tail earlier, you might get a slightly different number. Okay, so, but that's kind of goes with randomized simulation. All right. So, so we looked at how to do that problem um, uh, in uh, StatCato. We looked at the traditional calculations in StatKey, and we also looked at the randomization test uh, in StatKey. All right, let's go to the mean average problem. So our mean average problem that we did um, was talking about, we asked stat students, um, how much money do you spend when you eat out, right? It's this data right here, so this data right here. On average, how much do you spend on a, on a meal when you eat out? And um, we had, uh, discussed that uh, we were testing the claim that it was equal to $11, that the population mean average was equal to $11. The population mean average amount of money spent by stat students is $11 when they eat out. Well, let's see if we can test that claim. Now, uh, again, if you wanted to just do this problem in StatKey, uh, one of the things I, I often like to look at, though, before I do that is I want to get a little bit of the sample data here. I want to understand this sample data a little bit. So um, StatKey actually has a very nice program for that. Um, if you go under descriptive statistics and graphs, again, this was a quantitative variable. So I like to put my raw data into under descriptive statistics and graphs and edit data, delete out any data that's in there and paste in the data that's there. Now, 
This does not have an identifier. An identifier means a, num a word next to every number. So I want to uncheck the box that says identifier. Now occasionally a uh, stack key won't like certain titles if they're typed a certain way. I'm not sure, I haven't really figured out why it sometimes it doesn't like the title. But if it doesn't like the title, just delete out the title. Um, but the, if it does have a title, then you'll want to click data, ha data has a header row. Let's see what happens. Yeah, CSS improper format. Now, what that really usually means is that this title, for some reason there's some of the symbols or spaces in the title that it doesn't like. So what I found is if I just delete out the title, and then right here where it says header row, this no longer has a title, so I'm going to uncheck header row. Now it's working. Yeah, so, so occasionally you might get a little bit of things. Every program's a little different on what they like and don't like. So here's all my sample data. I can see that it's kind of skewed right. I can see the, the dot plot here. The center's around here. We got a kind of a, a longer tail to the right than to the left. You can also make a histogram. You can see the skewed right again. You can make a box plot if you wanted. And I'm looking here at the sample mean. That's the one, the key right here. I'm looking for the sample mean. Um, and it's 11.898, also the standard deviation 6.043, and the sample size 324. Um, in Staccato, if you just had those three values, you could actually summarize the data with those three values. Okay, so let's go back to Staccato and do this test. Now the data is actually, I pasted the data into Staccato. Um, Remember, this was a little bit bigger data set. So um, there's a, in Staccato, there's a 300, um, 300 uh, default. Uh, this data actually had 324 numbers in it. So um, I went to edit and add multiple rows. So I added a few rows. You can see where I typed in 100. I added 100 rows to the bottom so that the, the Staccato um, column went to 400 and that way that way you could easily paste in the 324 values so don't forget you if you're ever pasting a bigger data set into Staccato you always got to add multiple rows or columns um, okay so let's see what would that test look like alright so um, we are going to go statistics hypothesis test one population mean now this goes with the video that I did last time about uh, doing a one population mean t-test. Okay, so we use this, this data. I actually calculated it by hand so you could kind of see how it works. Now you can click in. I could have typed in the summary data. Remember I said if you knew the summary size, 324 and the sample mean, 11.898 uh, and the standard deviation, you could type them in there. Uh, that would work just fine. Or if you have the raw data, a lot of times with quantitative data you have the raw data, so I'm just going to click C1 as my raw data. Uh, again, our significance level, 0 0.05, we used a 5% significance level, so I'm going to leave that. But if you had a 1%, you could type it in. Here's my um, alternative hypothesis was not equal. We did a, in the example we did in the last video, we did an equal to, not equal to. If you remember, the claim was that the population mean average um, amount of money spent when stat students eat out is $11. So I'm going to type in under hypothesized mean, 11. Never, pop, never type in your sample mean there, only the population mean and the null hypothesis. That's what it means when it says hypothesized mean. Uh, don't ever type in the sample there. Um, again, you're going to want to go ahead and use the t-distribution for um, sample means usually, so just leave this one checked that is unknown and use t-distribution. Okay, so don't mess with that. All right, let's just push OK and see what happens. Well, if you notice, I got everything, right? That's what's great about a program like Staccato. You just get everything. You get a big list of all the numbers. I got the, here's the two critical values. I know the left tail starts at negative 1.967 and the right tail starts at positive 1.967. Um, let's see, it didn't actually tell me degrees of freedom. Usually they do here, but they did not. The degrees of freedom for one, one population mean would be n minus 1. So my sample size was 324, so my degrees of freedom would have been 323. But they actually didn't tell me that in the printout. 
I would have liked them to do that though. Uh, okay, here's my sample mean and my standard deviation. So I got all that information. I also know my test statistic. Here it is, 2.675. Right? And uh, like again, and you see the p-value, the two-tailed p-value, 0 0.0078. So all the numbers given to you, here's our null and alternative hypothesis, looks really good. So this is a great, Staccato is a very nice printout. This is a very nice summary of the hypothesis test uh, statistics. All right, now, but I, I want to kind of see these numbers visually. So I, again, I like to go back to stat key and kind of look at that a little bit. So I'm going to go back to stat key. Now this was a t-test, right? So if we're going to look up the traditional t-test numbers, we would go theoretical distributions and t. That's right there, t. Now I got my degrees of freedom was 324, right there, 324. There we go. And we were doing with a two-tailed test. Now, 5% significance level broken up into two tails would be 0 0.025 in each tail. And that's actually the default. And this, so this is the correct, correct one. Um, so if you had a 10% significance level, you'd have 5% in each of these two tails. And here's our critical values, right? 1.967 and negative 1.967. Same numbers that Sat Cato gave us. Now, what was our test statistic? Remember, our test statistic was 2.675, right? 2.675. Okay, so um, we can see 2.675 is it falling in the tail, right? 2.675 is in this area right here, so that it's in the right tail. So it is significantly, the sample data is significantly disagreeing with the null hypothesis. In other words, my sample mean of 11.898 is significantly disagreeing with the, pop the population mean of $11. Now, but this is not the p-value. Remember, these are the significance level. To get the p-value, we would put in the test statistic in one of these two boxes. Now, you can see that there's two boxes down here, negative and a positive. If my test statistic was negative, I would have put it in the left box. If it was positive, I would have put it in the right box. So I'm going to put it in the right box right there. So again, that was 2.675.